Hello everyone, uh, my name is Miguel Nobrega and it's my great pleasure to participate again in this online international meeting for users of OpenFOAM. Uh, thank you, Joseph, for uh, organizing this event again. This year I will uh, describe some of the industrial-based work we have been doing with, uh, with OpenFOAM. Uh, more specifically, this work is um, a joint project between Heinz Gross Kunsthof from Germany and the uh, University of Minho, uh, the, the place where I work. And uh, the main purpose uh, of, of the presentation is to somehow describe how, if, how to take advantage of additive manufacturing of the new possibilities given by additive manufacturing. Uh, manufacturing uh, approaches, uh, mainly uh, on the design of, of, of polymer processing tools. Uh, the case study is focused on extrusion blow molding and uh, um, along the presentation I'll, I'll explain what is extrusion blow molding, uh, why we are working in this specific sub subject. This is the, the outline of the presentation. I'll start with the, the motivation of the work. Then I'll describe the methodology we have employed to, to, to undertake the, the work. Uh, I'll describe, afterwards I'll describe the results and I'll finish uh, the presentation with, uh, with some conclusions. Uh, the work start, this is the main motivation of the work. As you know, uh, traditional milling uh, approaches are, I would say they are limited, but when compared to other techniques, other more recent techniques, like the, the additive manufacturing, uh, new additive manufacturing approaches, they are rather limited in terms of the geometries we can get. Uh, uh, and uh, currently, with, uh, with uh, techniques like selective uh, laser thintering, the one we'll be using in this presentation, we can we are able to obtain very complex geometries uh, uh, that push the, the boundaries of, uh, of, uh, of the geometries we can get forward. So, uh, the, our, our main question is, Okay, is there a systematic way to benefit from these new possibilities? Are we able to, 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 to take advantage of it in a clever way? Uh, and as I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, this, uh, uh, this specific work focuses on extrusion blow molding. The extrusion blow molding process is illustrated in, in this picture. Uh, the material, the polymer, is melted in an in a extruder and then uh, the, the polymer melt is pushed in a, uh, is forced to enter in an in extrusion die uh, to produce a tubular, tubular profile that is called the perison. Uh, then the mold closes, the mold is, comprises more than one part, the mold closes and uh, air is blown inside and the Tube, the, the tube, uh, the polymeric tube, the perison is forced uh, towards the mold walls it, that are uh, at a low temperature, so it cooled and we can obtain the, the required part. Uh, there are a few problems uh, in, in, the, in, in this specific uh, uh, technique. One of them is the, the melt residence time. And, uh, one of the difficulties directly related to the melt residence time is uh, uh, the color changing. Uh, when, uh, if, if, if the material stays for a long time in this region, uh, when the manufacturer tries to, to, to produce uh, the containers with a, with a different color, uh, it takes some time to change the color. And that's a big problem because it's a time, uh, it's a cons material consuming uh, process and uh, not just in terms of time, but also in terms of the material that is consumed. And, okay, 
was wondering if if, the, if there are ways would would like to explore ways of improving this and uh, uh, doing it in a in a energy efficient efficient manner. Uh, the work, uh, the design activity I'll describe afterwards is directly related to that part over there, the extrusion die, where the material is forced to pass uh, through. Um, and okay, this is the part we we'd like we'd like to design. And uh, Heinz Gross from the the company that. Uh, 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 is related also to this work, he, he had an idea to improve the performance of this tool. Because one of the main limitations, as I mentioned, is the time the material, the residence time of the material, not all the material that passes through the die, but the material that is close, close to the walls, that takes a long time to be removed. And that's a big problem when we want to change color, for instance. So, uh, Heinz Gross, at a certain point, I believe two, two three years ago, he, he, he thought uh, about this uh, new tool that could be obtained, could not be obtained by, by conventional machining approaches, just by, by additive manufacturing, in this case, selective laser melting, and he designed, he thought about a specific geometry that would allow to improve or to to solve the problems I mentioned before, uh, and he tried. He manufactured the part. This is the part. Uh, uh, he was he was um, he was working on, and uh, he uh, the first attempt attempt he, he tried uh, to this tool, this specific tool that it is illustrated, when when subjected to a color change. There were a few stripes that remained for a long time in the perison, and obviously the container would would keep those stripes for a long period. And the material, as you can see, the the, the tool is complex, and the material has a complex behavior. So for him, it was quite difficult to figure out why uh, these straps were uh, lasting longer, for a longer period. So, at that time we met in a conference, we were talking about, about this problem, and I suggested uh, uh, Heinz to, uh, why not try to model? Uh, I believe we have the conditions to do that in open phone, so let's try to, 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 to model and check if we were able to are able to 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 identify the 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 origin of the the cause uh, of the the stripes uh, at that time we were a bit puzzled because it was difficult to to figure out why and in fact uh, we we made the model and uh, as you can see in this cross section or we can see the top view of of the flow uh, and we can see that in fact, the modeling were predicting the, the, the stripes on the same location, on the same location the, 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 that were seen in, the, in, the, in the, the, the experimental work he was doing. So this really gave us, gave us some confidence to, to test. Okay, so if, if we are able to predict it, why not try to use modeling to improve the performance of, of the tool. And uh, okay, for, for open phone users, uh, this was the, the approach we followed. We received the geometries in STL format, uh, we, we did some surface checking, corrections, uh, uh, filling holes, be sure that all, uh, we have a, a watertight uh, uh, geometry, and for that we use Blender. Uh, to divide the, the STL in patches, we use Salome at that time. Uh, we could use Blender uh, as well, but at that time we, we decided to use Salome, uh, Salome to, to, to do that. For the mesh generation, we, we used uh, check mesh, uh, we used CF mesh. Uh, then we checked the mesh, tried to correct a few stuff if required. 
we did the calculation and, and the calculation involved two steps. First of all, we computed the, the velocity and the pressure fields in simple form. And then, in order to, 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 to compute the evolution or the phase change, because what we would like to, to, to check is what happens when we change the color of the material, uh, we use we plugged the flow computed by simple foam into scalar transport foam and you computed the phase evolution in scalar transport foam. Just to give you a more detailed overview, so this is the typical geometry, this is the geometry of the tool, the flow channel of the tool where the material passes. Uh, very complex geometry with a lot of inner details that are not visible in this outer, um, outer view of, of the tool. Uh, a detail of the mesh we have used. Uh, in the full geometry, it's quite difficult to identify the, 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 the cells, but if you, on a, on a zoomed view of a specific region, you can see that we're able with the, with the mesh generator to capture a, a lot of the, all the geometry details. And uh, the computational me mesh is at about 7 million cells. So this is something that is... Uh, uh, is quite regular in, uh, in nowadays. Um, for the flow calculation, we, we use, as I mentioned, the, the, the simple form. We have used the Bert Carroll constitutive model, uh, which is available in, in open form, and uh, we are able to compute the pressure, the, the, the pressure distribution for this specific case, or for a specific case we studied we got a pressure, a maximum pressure of 75 bar and, uh, and uh, 107, for 107 uh, kilograms per hour in terms of flow rate. And uh, when computing the flow, we're able to compute the streamlines, whatever required to, uh, and that information or mainly the flow rates were plugged into, into, uh, into the Scala Transport Foam uh, Solver. On the scalar transport foam solver, uh, we can see things like the one I'm illustrating. This is uh, what happens when one of the phases, we are just seeing one of the phases, we are not seeing in this movie the phase that was already in the channel, we are just seeing the new phase entering the channel. And we can see that, okay, it's how, how the filling happens, which are the last parts to be filled, what should be improved, to, to obtain a, a better a better uh, design uh, to improve the, the the performance of the tool and the capability to see that in this detailed manner uh, really allowed us to to improve the the tool the tool geometry uh, okay some of this this new new approach has some drawbacks uh, like okay we have a more restrictive uh, flow channel so the pressure drop increases a bit uh, uh, this is feasible this is acceptable in terms of of uh, of, um, of uh, uh, industry uh, but okay there is a, a, a negative uh, a, a result from this new approach that has a lot of advantages, as I'll show you afterwards. But, okay, there are some details. Uh, in this case, the drawback, uh, the, the drawback is the, uh, the, the increase of, of the pressure drop. Uh, but uh, the main advantage is illustrated here. Uh, we did several design trials to reach the optimized uh, solution of the geometry, uh, for which I cannot provide you all the details, uh, but uh, we used the approach I mentioned, I mentioned before in terms of open form. Uh, and uh, T0 corresponds to the conventional tool without the details that were uh, uh, conceived by, by Heinz Gross and different trials and uh, from trial one to trial two, we, what we try to do was to improve, uh, reduce the 
reduce the, the time required to change from one material to the other. And what we are seeing here is after five seconds of adding the, the new material, the trial 2 is much better than trial, trial 0 and so on. Uh, and this, this was the, the, this illustrates the advantage we got. There were many other uh, trials and analyses to improve and to minimize the, to reduce the amount of material that were, was uh, um, uh, the time required to change, to change the material. Uh, this movie illustrates the experimental assessment done, done with the tool. Uh, we, in this case, uh, a specific flow rate, the material, and you, you can see from the, the extrusion uh, uh, that after some time will change from one material to the other, and the modification of, of, of the, the, the material changes very fast, much faster than, than, than the usual, uh, that usually takes minutes to change color, and the stripes were not there anymore. With the improved design, uh, the stripes were not there. Uh, it was, uh, as you can see, uh, the color change uh, took place much faster than it used to, to do in a, in a, in a, in, with conventional tools. And this means uh, a huge amount of, of, of saving for saving resources uh, in terms of the, 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 the industrial practice. So, this takes me to the conclusions of, of the work. Hopefully, I showed you that there are clear benefits from uh, using additive manufacturing methods on polymer processing tools, to design polymer processing tools, but obviously, we are dealing with more complex geometries, more complex material rheology, and so modeling and optimization, I didn't show you anything about optimization, uh, at least automatic optimization in this work, but uh, we expect to obtain clear benefits from doing modeling and optimization to guide the design of the tools. And for this specific case, the case I, I showed you, is uh, it was it was really useful to 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 see the possibility to see what happens inside the channel to predict what happens inside the channel uh, uh, to allow the improve the improvement of, of the tool and to reach the performance I sh just show you in the in the in the movie uh, and finally. Open foam was again successfully applied and experimental validated on a, on the real on the industrial case study. Uh, if you are interested in, in open foam, I I suggest you to to uh, if you if you want to learn more, there is a uh, I would like to draw your attention to the open foam wiki. Uh, the address are there, and uh, this year there will be uh, three events. In, a, in less than a month, we'll have the, the FOM Iberia. Uh, it's a, a meeting for the Iberian uh, open FOM users from Portugal and Spain who get together in Porto this year, uh, uh, beginning of June. By the end of July, we'll have the open FOM workshop uh, 2019 uh, that will take place in Germany in Duisburg, uh, and uh, middle of October in Berlin, Germany, there will be the seventh edition of the, of the Open Phone Conference. So, if, if you'd like to be involved in the community, I really suggest you to attend these meetings. When possible, this is a very good place to meet persons with uh, similar interests, with uh, interest in Open Phone, that like to learn, share experiences, uh, look for partners. Uh, this is uh, very, very. These events are very good to do that, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to, to attend all of them this year. And okay, this finishes my presentation. Thank you for your patience, patience, and um, I hope you you enjoyed and uh, you you 
and that this will motivate to you to explore more about OpenFoam. Uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye.